All right, so the purpose of this video is just to kind of give you an introduction to MetaSim and to kind of help you get the, get the program started and downloaded. So first thing we'll want to do is we'll want to go to our internet search engine. And I'm using Google Chrome. And we'll just type in MetaSim. And as you can see, Google kind of filled it in for me, but we're wanting MetaSim download. Then I already know that the second option is going to take me to my download file, so I'll go ahead and click on that one. And then we're given three choices. We can download it for a Mac, Windows, or Linux. And I'm running Windows 7, so I'll go ahead and download the one for Windows 7. Okay, now that our download's finished, we'll go ahead and install Metasim. And I really do not need the manual because the manual is available online. So I'll go ahead and uncheck it. Okay, now that we've finished downloading and installing MetaSim, go ahead and close out the browser. Then we'll want to go to our list of programs. And right here is our first option, which is MetaSim. Go ahead and click on MetaSim. It's going to bring us here. Now, before we can do anything with this program, we need to go ahead and set up some defaults so the program knows where it can go to find the files it needs to find. So, first, so we'll go up here to the top under Edit. We'll scroll down to Preference. The first thing we're going to do is we want to set our database location. Now this is going to be where you stored your files. So when, if you downloaded your genomes from NCBI or Database of Japan or whoever you used, wherever you download those files to, you want to go ahead and set that as kind of your default location. Now for me, I went ahead and set everything to my desktop. So I'll just go ahead and click on Desktop. And I created a folder on my desktop called MetaSim, so we're going to click on that folder. Just hit open. Okay, now the next thing we'll need to do is we'll go ahead and go back into preference and set defaults. And go ahead and name this default. For the purpose of this, I'll just call it the test. And uh, the error model that we want to use, and this is going to be to simulate a uh, next-gen sequencing run. So we want to simulate a 454 run. And uh, let's go ahead and bump this up to 10,000. And you can put whatever numbers you want in here. Uh, they're just kind of kind of the the basic sets. And expected relink, well, it's going to change that to 500. And then everything else you can just leave alone. Or you can always go to the manual and see if there's anything you'd like to change then hit OK. OK. Now we'll go ahead and start a new project. So go up to the file, click on New Project. Now before we can do anything, we need to actually go grab some of our uh, genomic files. So we'll go ahead and click on Database. Then you want to right click, Import Files. And because since we defaulted to that medicine, it's going to take us directly to where our genome files were stored. However, if it did take you to a uh, home screen to where you weren't sure where you were, um, you can kind of go through either via here or just click that button and just kind of search through to where your files might be located. And so I'm only going to select a few of these. However, typically I'd probably select them all if I was wanting to look at the entire genome of Arabidopsis. So I'll go ahead and take uh, chromosome number three. Four and five. And you can just select those by holding down the control key. I want to import the files. Okay, another thing I want to go ahead and throw in there is a pathogen that maybe we're trying to look at. In this case, I have a Ralstonia genome, so we'll go ahead and pull the Ralstonia and throw that in there. And what this is going to do is going to kind of provide us what a maybe a 
electronic version of what we might expect to come out of a 454 run. Next thing you want to do is you want to go through and highlight all these. Right click again and create a taxon profile. And you can name this whatever you want to name it and also save it to wherever you want to save it. I want to go ahead and uh, save this one back into that medicine folder and we'll just leave it titled as is. So create the profile. And now in here we can go in and kind of change these values right through here. So you want to go to text editor. As far as the plant genome, I'll go ahead and leave that one the same with this bacteria genome. I want to go ahead and bump that one up. So we'll change this to 2000. And you'll see why that's important here in just a second. Okay. I'm going to hit done. Yes. And now the next thing we want to do is we want to actually run a simulate a 454 run. So let's go ahead and just double check that our presets are set up. So we want 454. We've already set all this up, but I just like to double check anyway. So we got 10,000. Everything else looks good. Read length roughly around 500. Now it won't be exactly 500. That's just going to be kind of around that number. Okay. So now we'll right click again. We want to run. Select a preset, and then we can name it whatever we want to name it. So we'll call this one Arab Gastonia. Okay. Make sure this is check marked. We want to go ahead and run the simulator. Okay, now it's finished. Now, how you can check to make sure this actually worked is you can go to this file. Click here, and this is kind of a preview of what the 454 output would essentially look like. Now, if you're curious to kind of what percentage of uh, that bacteria was within that genome, all you need to do is go right up here. If you look here, you see our three Arabidopsis and our Ralstonia. So we know that we did a total of 10,000 reads. So you just do some simple addition and division and figure out the percentage of Rastonia reads that are within this mixture here. Okay, now that we've finished this portion of it, we can go ahead and minimize this window. We'll go to our folder where we stored all of our information. Then you want to look for your, it's going to save this into like a zip file. And in my case, I, I'm using pzip, which is what well, this is what the little icon looks like for pzip. So we can go in here just to kind of give you a preview of this. Let's go ahead and extract this file. Okay, in case you're curious to which one you're looking for, really you can just go over here and look at these large numbers. And this will tell you what the file is. And we'll select a program. And either Notepad or Notepad++. These are two really good programs to use, especially you can do a lot of bioinformatics. I'll go ahead and open this window. And there you have it. This is essentially a simulated 454 sequencing run using those genomes I plugged in along with a uh, pathogen.